Crucible TV. Crucible TV. Where is everybody? Looks like it's just me today, guys. Hey, thank you guys for tuning in. Every Friday, 1230, Crucible TV coming at you. And you know Coach Joey coming at you today. You know what the topic's going to be. Baseball. Baseball. We're going five, five mistakes baseball players make. What's up, Instagram? What's up, Jack? Popping on. Lauren, hope you're having a great day. Hope you're having a great day. We're going to go right into it today. Rapid fire. What's up, Jack? Jack giving me the emoji. Giving me the praise emoji. Love it, man. Hope you're having fun on vacation. I keep seeing those pictures, man. Looks, looks gorgeous out there. Be careful driving that boat, though, man. Be careful. Okay, number one, five mistakes baseball players make. Having no purpose or plan, okay? I want you guys to start with why. Great book. Just finished it a couple months ago. Simon Sinek, start with why. We always have to remember why we're doing something. If, if, we, if we just play baseball because, let's say, our dad was a great player, let's say our mom wants us to play, how good are we really going to be? Are we really going to live up to our fullest potential? Because if our parents just want us to play, like, I bet you you're not going to be able to put in that extra work that, that it's going to take to reach that extraordinary level. We're not going to have enough passion to do so. Baseball, big city. What's up on Instagram? What's up, Will Watkins? That was a great workout this morning, man. Great, great workout. So, hey, if you're just popping on, we're going five mistakes baseball players make. Number one, having no purpose or plan. Always remembering why we're playing baseball. Every practice, every game, remind yourself why. Why am I out here? Like, why am I practicing? Like, am I just doing it because it's fun? Or do I have really, really, really big goals and big plans for the game that I play? And it doesn't have to be just baseball. It can be basketball. It can be football. It can be hockey. It can be life. Like, why am I going to my job today? Like, what, what is it that I'm trying to accomplish? What purpose do I have? So, mistake number one, having no purpose or plan with playing baseball. Number two, this is a hot, 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 hot topic. No training in season. And this seems to be like a common myth that is passed along every year by either coaches or parents or, or somebody writes a, you know, writes a blog on, you know, injuries in baseball and why training, why overtraining is causing all these different injuries. Well, there's really, there's Big Mike, Big Mikey B, what's up, baby? What's up, baby? Hey, if you're just popping on, if you're just popping on, let us know where you're tuning in from. We always, we always want to know. Type in city, city, state. Big Mike, I know you're joining us from down south somewhere. Uh, did you get our stuff yet? Let, pop on there. Let me know. Comment. Did we send you your stuff yet? If not, I got to get on Coach Ryan. We got to send you that Crucible swag bag that, that you deserve, man. You deserve it. Thank you for being, uh, for being a loyal, loyal viewer. We love it. We love it, man. So, you're just tuning in again. Five mistakes baseball players make. Number one was no purpose or plan. Number two, we're getting right into it. No training in season. And like I said, this, this is a common myth that gets thrown around. Well, we got to be careful. Don't overtrain. Don't, you know, don't be exhausted for your practice tonight. Don't be exhausted for your game tonight. Well, if you think about it, what do the pros do? What do college players do? Do they, do they still train whenever the season starts? Like, are, are they just doing nothing and just going to practice and showing up to games? Heck no. If you watch Mike Trout, if you listen to Mike Trout talk about what it takes to, to play at a high level, they're training every day. Every single day they're training. Because a lot of people mistake, training is not just lifting weights. Training is not just doing speed and agility. Training is recovery. And that's where, that's where that kind of myth comes along. Everybody think it's overtraining. Well, it's, you're just under recovering. If, if you're sore for a game or sore for a practice, you haven't recovered 
are you, are you, are you really putting in that extra work on your recovery? Chances are probably not. You know, we really, we really make it a, make it a habit. We make it a routine with our guys, with our athletes that come in with our gals too. We want a world-class, we want to recover at a world-class level. We start every session foam rolling, doing ankle mobility, doing hip mobility, doing that extra, you know, shoulder mobility. That way we're taking care of ourselves before we start getting into our workout. And guess what? After the workout, they're right back doing those things. And not to mention those days in between our heavy lifting, our heavy strength and conditioning days, we're recovering as well. We're, we're putting in that extra mobility, that extra stability work. That way we can protect our bodies so they can, so they can perform at a world-class level. So mistake number two, no training in season. Mistake number three, I love this one. This is probably my favorite one. Play more and more games. And I think we're, I think we've reached a new phase of baseball to where you know, we're having, we're having nine-year-olds and 10-year-olds and 11-year-olds playing 60 and 70 game seasons. And, you know, take it for what it is. Take it for what it is. Nine-year-olds have no business playing 60 games. You know, we're, colleges are asking, NC, at the NCAA level, D1, they're playing 60 games. So you're asking a nine-year-old who hasn't matured yet physically or mentally you're asking them to go out and play in the same amount of games as a college athlete. I don't, I don't think that's going to turn out very well. Big Mike, what we got, baby? Sadly, so many, so many of my coaches focused on training and performance, we, and we have never heard the word recovery. Maybe it was the 90s thing. Hey, man, I'm, I'm right there with you. I'm right there with you. Um, you know, when I was in college, actually, I – I reached a point in my baseball career where I was like, you know, I had big goals. I had big goals of being a professional level player. And it was about sophomore, junior year. And I was like, am I really doing enough to get to that level? And I kind of had that, that come to Jesus meeting as, as, as many people say, I had to, I had to reach a point where I'm like, let's go, man. Like I had to amp it up. So I amped, what I did was I amped my training up, but my recovery was still down here. So actually, and I didn't know it at the time, a few, year, a few years later during my second professional season, I ended up, uh, you know, tearing my knee up. So, and I, I, I always, I always tell that story on why recovering is so important. You don't think that it's bothering you at the time you're doing it, you know, training way, way up here. You know, you're getting after it every single day and you're like doing five minutes of foam rolling or two minutes of stretching. Well, I'm, I'm putting in hours and hours of, you know, heavy weights and, and speed training and all that stuff, but I'm recovering two minutes a day, you know, and that's, that's going to take a toll on your body over time. Like you said, I'm paying for it now. I, I, I pay for it too, man. Like I have those days where, you know, it's those cold days where my knees, uh, my knee wakes up and it's like, it has a hard time getting going. So I'm right there with you, man. And I'm only, I'm only 28. So I, uh, but need, 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 needless to say, after, after I had my surgery, that recovery, that recovery, I, I had to amp up and I had to focus on, on all those little things. So it, um, it's, it's definitely a big mistake that, that trainers and that performance coaches make is they, they tell these kids, Hey, don't overtrain, don't overtrain, don't overtrain. Well, yeah, like overtraining can be, can be a thing, but if we're training hard and we're recovering hard, we're going to be fine. Like we're, we're going to perform, we're going to perform like a beast. You look at any Olympic athlete, Usain Bolt, for example, he was one of those guys that, you know, was just unstoppable during, during my high school, kind of my high school age, middle school age, even college age, like unstoppable. You think he didn't like overtrain? Oh yeah. But he recovered at a world-class level too. That's why he was able to, you know, play in or compete in so many, so many Olympic games. So, Hey, if you're just popping on, uh, just me today, coach Joey, 
we're going over five mistakes that baseball players make. Number one, no purpose or plan, having no purpose or plan while you're in there. Number two, don't train in season. Number three, we're going over right now, play more and more games. And, you know, Mike and I were just talking about, you know, we're, we're, uh, we're, we're making these nine and 10 year olds compete in 60, 70 game seasons. And that's what college athletes play in. And, you know, I think that, I think that if we want, if we don't want to lose baseball players, because I, I think we are losing baseball players because it's just becoming too much at, at such a young age. You know, I remember my experience. I played little league baseball. You know, I, I have nothing against travel ball. Like I, most of my, the guys that I train, most of my athletes, they play travel ball. But, you know, I, here at Crucible, we try to educate not only the athlete, but the parents. Like if we're going to compete in those long seasons, we got to be training. We got to be recovering. We got to be doing all those little things, all that skill work. Because just because you're playing in a lot of games, that doesn't mean you're developing. That doesn't mean you're you're getting to a spot where you're getting better. Maldonado, what's happening? I knew you'd be on, baby. I knew you'd be on. I'm so so fired up that you're tuning in today. Um, hey, Mike, or hey, uh, Maldonado, going over five mistakes baseball players make. Number one, no purpose or plan. Number two. No training in season. Number three going over right now, playing in more and more games. Number four, this is one of my favorite. Actually, all these are my favorite. That's why I wrote them down. All these, all these five are my favorite. Number four, worrying about things that you have no control of. Big, big, big mistake that not only baseball players make, but I think any sport, guys can fall into this trap or girls can fall into this trap. And even us in everyday life, you know, we, every day we, we deal with something that can make us upset. You know, we, there, there, maybe there's something happens to us. Maybe we're stuck in traffic. Maybe we get rear ended by somebody on the highway. Do you have control of that? Do you have control of the fact that you're sitting in a traffic jam? Like, and how many times and I'm guilty of this too. I'm guilty. Of, I'll be the first one to raise my hand. You get frustrated, don't you? When you're sitting in a traffic jam. D Stone, what's happening, baby? Ricky Mount, you're my favorite. You're my favorite too, Ricky. Ricky, four years ago, what were we? We were roomies, weren't we? We were roomies. I hope you're doing well, man, out there. And out there in California, hey, you're probably one that can relate getting frustrated out there in California on the interstate. You know, trying to go home, five-minute drive turns into two hours. I don't know how you do it, man. I don't know how you do it, but what we're going over, you have no control of that, do you? You have no control. You have no control if you're stuck in traffic. You have no control if somebody, if you're driving down the highway and somebody bumps into you. D Stone, you too, baby. You too. You have no control over if somebody pops you in the back and messes up your $40,000 car. No control. Baseball, what, what don't we have control of in a baseball game? Umpire? How many times have we made excuses about the umpire? Ooh, that was a bad call, coach. Well, yeah, but you have three strikes. Like, just because he made a bad call on one strike, don't don't blame the umpire for that. You know what I mean? What's happening, Sean? You crushed it this morning, man. 8 a.m. 8 a.m. I love it. Sean Helmer, 10 years old, getting his getting his 8 a.m. workouts in. Coach Joe, you look like Harold Ramos. I don't know who that is, man. You have to uh you have to send a picture, comment a picture of, of who, who you're talking about. And we'll uh we'll let Instagram, we'll let Instagram determine if I look like Mr. Harold or not. Big Poppy Poncho, what's happening, baby? Talking about things we have no control of as baseball players. Step number four in five mistakes that baseball players make. Worrying about things that we have no control of. Umpires, bad weather. Somebody popped that in on Instagram. I love that. You know, you're pitch, you're throwing a no-hitter four innings or five innings into the game, and it starts pouring. Can you control that? Nope. Can you control the fact that the umpire squeezes you on a call and you walk a guy? No control. No control. So if we start worrying about things that, that we have no control of, and I love, I love 
I love relaying this information to my athletes. And I got this from John Wooden, great, great, legendary basketball coach. If you worry about things you have no control of, it starts to affect the things, it starts to affect the things you do have control of. So, so here we are worrying about an umpire, we're worrying about all the other teams chirping from the dugout or chirping from the bench. We don't have control of that. And if you don't stay grounded here, if you don't stay strong five inches, six inches between the ears, you're gonna lose it as a baseball player. And now all of a sudden the things you do have control of, they're not gonna, you're not gonna do well in those either. So big, big thing as a hitter, as a pitcher, as a defender, don't worry. Don't worry about things you have no control of. Mike, what do you got? Worry equals cortisol. Too much cortisol release when you don't need it. More worry and it's bad for your body. Absolutely. Like unnecessary stress, that's going to kill you. It's going to kill you mentally and physically. And you might not even realize it that you're, that you're over stressing or over worrying about a situation. Dawson, away teams, field conditions. Absolutely, man. How many, how many times... Well, go ahead and pop on here on Instagram. Shoot me with like a thumbs up. How many times do we show up in a field and we're like, oh my goodness, look at that all dirt infield or look at, look at that bad lip at third base. Look at that bad lip at first base. Look how low the mound is. Not going to be able to throw us hard today. Oh, look at that crappy cage over there. Don't, don't worry about it. Like do the things you have control of. Be strong in those things. Control your at-bat. Jack, I love it. 100 thumbs up. Control your at-bat. Control your presence on the pitcher's mound, mentally and physically. De defenders, if you make a mistake because a bad hop gets you, like, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Like, be ready for the next one. Be ready for the next, be ready for the next ball to come at you. And, and don't sit there and blame, oh, I made that mistake because of the bad hop. Or... I was worried about the last bad hop, so I didn't make the next play. So stay, stay grounded mentally. Stay grounded. Number five, last one, last one, complaining about playing time. I would say we've all done it. I've done it. I've gotten frustrated. And, you know, a lot of people say, you know, you have no control over your playing time. But I, I kind of disagree with that. You know, I, I think it's a, I think it's a thing where we have to be completely honest with ourselves and, and really ask ourselves the question, are we, are we really doing enough to earn that playing time? Like when we get an opportunity, are, are we taking advantage of it or are we just letting that opportunity blow by because we're still upset and we're still mad that we don't get as much playing time as we think we deserve? You know, I, re I really want you guys to ask yourself that question. You know, am I really, am I really doing enough? When I get in the game, when I get that opportunity, am I wasting it or am I taking advantage of the opportunity? You know, there's a, <laughs> there's a great quote and I wrote this down. Shane Battier, I don't know if you guys know who Shane Battier is. He's a, he, I think he just retired from the NBA a few years ago. But this great quote and I wanted to share it with you guys. I don't complain about playing time. My job is to play so well that the coach can't sit me. And I, I absolutely love that because it's so true, though. It's so true. You know, we look at MLB teams right now. Look at the New York Yankees, for example. Who would have thought that right now, at this point in the season, if you look back at their roster at the beginning of the year, most of these guys were bench players. They were going to be bench players that are that are currently starting these games. And they were all stars this year. You know, talk about taking advantage of the opportunity. Now I know they're in the big leagues and like, but but that doesn't change the fact that, you know, if you're a college player or if you're a youth player or a high school player, if you make the team, if you're on the team, you will get an opportunity or else you wouldn't have made the team to begin with, you know? And, and I think a lot of, a lot of younger kids really mistake. They, they really, they really make that mistake and they, you know, Oh, I don't get enough opportunities. Well, you do get opportunities. 
but what are you doing with them? You know, or are you are you going out there and you know, are you you get a pinch hit at bat? Are you are you focused at a world class level? You know, are you are you in there to to do damage at the plate? You know, if you get an inning on the mound and the score's fifteen to nothing, are are you just wasting that inning? Or are you out there to like, hey, if I do well here, coach can't sit me. You know, if I go up to a game and a meaningless at bat, what we think is a meaningless at bat, but it's really not, it's an opportunity. You know, if, the, if, if it's a nine to one game in the last inning with two outs and you get your number called to go in and hit, like, let's go, baby. Let's go. Like, what are we doing with that opportunity? So, so don't just sit there and, you know, assume, oh, I don't get, I don't get enough opportunities to play, you know, you do get opportunities, but what are you doing with them? What are you doing with them? And I, I think parents too, you guys can be guilty of, of making that same mistake mentally and you get frustrated and then you, then you email coach or you call coach or pull coach aside after practice or after a game. Hey, little Johnny, you know, I think Johnny deserves more playing time, but we never think about like, okay, why? Like his last three at bats, he's gone in there and struck out. Like I know the score was ten to nothing, but I gave him an opportunity. But what did he do with it? Well, he struck out. You know, I'm not going to put him in a game to start if if he's not taking advantage of those at bats that I'm giving him late in the game. If anything, a ten nothing game and you get an at bat, like it's meaningless. In the game, it's meaningless. To you, it's not meaningless. But you go in, it's no stress. Like, go in there and crush a ball somewhere, man. Like, even pitching. You're not coming in in a tie game in the World Series. Like, go in there and, and go in there and mow guys down, you know? Mow guys down. So, if you, hey, if you guys are just popping on, five mistakes baseball players make, make sure you go back and rewatch this. This will also get posted on YouTube at Coach Joey Miller and also Crucible Performance. So make sure you guys subscribe to our YouTube channels. Um, Facebook, we're coming at you from the Crucible Facebook page. But also make sure you go type in Coach Joey Miller and, and follow, my, follow my coaching page. Instagram, you guys are on the Coach Joey page. Make sure you hop over to Crucible Performance on IG. Make sure you give them a follow. Make sure you comment and like all the, all the cool photos. So again, hey, thank you guys for joining me today. I know it was just me. You know it would be a baseball topic. Five mistakes baseball players make. I want you guys to have a great weekend. It's supposed to be beautiful weather, I think, over here on the East Coast. Beautiful weather. And we are, we're fired up for you guys to reach your, to reach your goals. And, uh, hey, finish up the summer strong. You know, a lot of you guys are getting ready to go back to school in a few weeks. Um, I know Maryland, Maryland, we go back late. We don't go back till first week of September. But a lot of the surrounding states, Pennsylvania, Virginia, West Virginia, you guys are going back in like two weeks. So, so let's finish out. Let's finish out the summer strong. Let's stay focused. Hey, just because it's summer, that's no excuse to not work hard. You know, every day I want you guys, want you guys to focus on one thing to get better at. Focus on one thing, anything, sports. You know, hey, you guys can still read in the summer. You know that you don't have to sit there and like on your phones all day and and oh I'm exercising my thumbs I'm working on my hand eye coordination no 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 that's not how it works that's not how it works hey do something productive today we love you guys hey next week next Friday 12:30 we can't wait to see you peace <laughs>